Good afternoon, everyone. It is noon, Monday, April 4th, 2022. This is infrared, and we're at the 125th Street station on the number one train so that you don't have to be. This is part of our series of Broadway by the Hour, where we're walking the entire length of Broadway from the Battery to the Bronx in digestible one-hour segments. I think this is segment six or seven. I've lost count so far. So, this station was part of the original subway line in 1904. Here we are looking over 125th Street eastbound, or looking east. it via the stairway. I think this was an original stairway. came from the Manhattan Valley Viaduct. Here's the arch for the Manhattan Valley Viaduct. And as we cross 125th Street, again, looking east, towards the East River and west towards the Hudson River. Now we said this is Broadway by the hour, and we're walking Broadway from the Battery to the Bronx. But, as has been the case so far, we may take some diversions and detours off of Broadway as we continue to head north. So, generally we're going in this direction, north on Broadway. But first, Let's go, I was gonna say let's go off campus. Let's actually go on campus. This is the West Harlem Campus Edition to Columbia University, whose main campus is a few blocks south of here, um, on Broadway, between Broadway and Amsterdam, between 114th and 120th Street. And we're now at 125th and Broadway.
planning on a lot of cyclists attending this part of the campus. And the structure ahead of us is the Riverside Drive Viaduct. Again, this neighborhood is also called the Manhattan Valley, West Harlem. When Columbia originally uh, proposed expanding its campus in this neighborhood, they originally named the campus in its planning stages as the Manhattan Valley campus, but since changed the name to West Harlem. This building was a former dairy, uh, but part of the Manhattan Project took place there during World War II. This is a Columbia-owned apartment building, and, well, I was going to say, this is one of my favorite intersections in the city. Although there are no street signs marking this intersection, um, I assume they'll be put up sometime in the near future. But this is the intersection of 125th and 129th Street. And for those of you who may be saying, no, that's impossible, how can two numbered streets that are parallel at some point intersect. So, I don't know. It's because 125th Street here is uh, basically at an angle and going northwest, while 129th Street here is in its original east-west orientation. So, uh, the little bridge in the distance, you can see the Henry Hudson Parkway or West Side Highway going over, I don't know, is that 125th or 129th Street. And then what you can't really see uh, is the um, structure in front carries Amtrak trains. We'll see it better in a minute. Carries Amtrak trains that go uh, between Penn Station and Albany. So, at this point, or at this time, I should say, Cotton Club is that its original location? Does anyone know? And just note the. Uh, ad on the billboard, the black and white billboard. So we're going to walk under the Riverside Drive Viaduct. So the viaduct carries Riverside Drive above, but I believe the street below the street at street level is called 12th Avenue. Yes. So again, um, more of the Columbia campus. And looking out. Oh. Dinosaur barbecue. one in Brooklyn. Of course, they started in upstate New York.
I can't tell you what any of these buildings are on the Columbia campus. I just don't know. All right, well, this is the Columbia Business School. This is view back towards the main Columbia campus. And we're going to just, uh, no, we're not. Here we go. Let's go back up to Broadway. Mm, or not. Let's continue along 12th Avenue. an earlier segment uh, covering 72nd to 96th Street. Uh, we passed the original Fairway store at Broadway and 75th approximately. Fairway did expand into Harlem and despite the signs saying store entrance this way uh, you can see this parking lot for the fairway supermarket is all locked up so I think this is part of the fallout from fairways having filed for bankruptcy several years ago they closed several of their stores including this one uh, they also closed one in the Red Hook section of Brooklyn after spending millions of dollars restoring it after Sandy. Let's just uh, get a look at... The concrete in need of repair on the Amtrak structure. So, what would you expect to find next to uh, the expanded campus of a world-class university like Columbia? A bus depot, of course, or a depot. So this is where um, a lot of the buses that run along Fifth Avenue are stored and maintained. So buses like on the one, two, three, four, and five routes. This is a replacement depot built in the 80s or 90s? I'm going to say the 90s. 
it replaced a depot from I think the 1920s that took up this same footprint and it was called the 132nd Street Depot at the time because this is 132nd Street but prior to it becoming a depot it was actually a manufacturing assembly plant for the double-decker buses that used to run on Fifth Avenue. And it was the property of the Fifth Avenue Coach Company, which ceased to exist after uh, employees went on strike in 1962, I think. And the city or state condemned the company and acquired the assets and formed uh, a public company to operate the buses which they conveniently and succinctly named the Manhattan and Bronx Surface Transit Operating Authority. And that was a legally separate entity from the Transit Authority, which operated buses elsewhere in the city. And that Manhattan and Bronx Surface Transit Operating Authority, also called MABSOA, had its headquarters in that building. One last look, Broadway southbound. Uh, a last look at the Columbia West Harlem campus and a flowering tree before we continue our walk north. And just note the detail on at the top of the bridge abutment. Again, this was built in 1904 as part of the original subway route that ran from City Hall in Manhattan to 145th Street, also in Manhattan. Here we have Again, a view down showing the Riverside Drive Viaduct, the Henry Hudson Parkway, and Amtrak. So, this train is going at top speed now, We're approaching 30 miles an hour. Before 1989, the Manhattan Valley Viaduct was wobbly. I know, that's an engineering term. And trains going in either direction were limited to 10 or 15 miles an hour on the viaduct. So it was uh, it was really clear that the train was slowing down. If the train was coming north from 116th Street or south from the next stop, 137th Street, as a passenger, you would notice it. The, the train would become much slower when it surfaced here. And as a pedestrian, you were aware that uh, sometimes you were walking faster than the train was. 
as the train left 125th Street and crawled until it descended back into the tunnel where normal speeds resumed. So now the number one train has uh, gone back below ground. And if we look west on 135th Street, um, we no longer see the Riverside Drive Viaduct because we've come up basically to the same level as the viaduct. And here, I just like the address on here um, and this building which was built in the 70s 80s So I think we're in the neighborhood starting at 135th Street and going north that uh, in the 60s was called Spanish Harlem. Note the detail on the apartment buildings down the block and here. Double parking. So we're here at the 137th Street City College Station. And if you walk up the hill to the right, uh, beyond this school, you'll be at City College. I think we'll get a look at it. The hill where City College is located. As I recall, it's actually up quite a steep hill. get a better sense looking down here. Uh, we were below Riverside Drive just a short while ago when we started this walk and now we're above it. And uh, looking up here in the distance is uh, the southern portion of City College which we're not going to see today. But we are going to continue up Broadway. Well, I take that back. Let's go to City College. Let's at least catch a little glimpse of it.
waiting a long time. So the question is, like here, where it says do not enter, and then there's uh, the little new sign above. How long do they leave the new sign? When is a newly imposed regulation considered no longer new? Because eventually they do remove those new signs and they just leave the do not enter sign in place. Here's either a, a new or uh, a newly upgraded park on the way to City College and students on the way to City College. Get a glimpse of a newer portion of the campus, which was built in place of uh, Lewiston Stadium, which was City College's concrete stadium that was uh, demolished in the 70s, I think, shortly after a scene from Serpico was filmed there. So if you want to see Lewis in the stadium, see the film Serpico, 1973. So we have the newer portion of the City College campus and the older portion. of the entire campus. And I think we're approaching Convent Avenue, which is uh, a regular city street, but it goes through the heart of the City College campus. And I think driving on the, re on the street on Convent Avenue is restricted during class hours.
So these, I think, were gates to the entrance to the original campus. In my parents' generation, City College, the flagship college of the city university system, was called the Poor Man's Harvard. Now I think it's called the Poor Man's Hunter. And there's a high school here uh, in conjunction with the City Department of Ed, the gates to what was in its time the northern end of the campus. But that's also been expanded, including to here, which uh, is their engineering school. One last look at the original campus. And we're now in the neighborhood of Hamilton Heights. And I believe we're about to enter the Hamilton Heights Historic District. Yes, and indeed the Brown Street sign indicates that we're now in the Hamilton Heights Historic District. So the facades of these buildings are landmarked. Any improvements to them, any changes in the appearance have to be approved by the Landmarks Commission. Looking at some of the detail on these buildings. And across the street, Our Lady of Lords Church.
wonder if this counts in terms of the Landmarks Conservancy's uh, Landmarks Preservation Commission's deliberations. All right, we're going to find our way back to Broadway. We're at Amsterdam Avenue. Amsterdam and 142nd. This is Hamilton Avenue. And we go back down the hill, back towards Broadway. All right, we're back on Broadway, or almost. I think we're going to try to cross the street. We have about 25 seconds left to do it. city bike stand with no city bikes. Don't know what the underlying story is.
parallel parking made even more difficult on steep hills like this. Hmm. Under new management. By the way, are they open? Caridad. Um, if you're in the neighborhood, stop by Great Mofongo and Morir Sonyanda. We're going to walk down 145th Street. Well, but first, let's note this. Uh, across the street is the 145th Street stop on the 1. In 1904, when the subway first opened, that was the end of the line. We now know that the subway goes all the way to 242nd Street and Broadway at an entrance to Van Cortlandt Park in the Bronx. But in 1904, it ended at 145th Street. Let's get a look at some of the apartment buildings on this or brownstones even on uh, this, the westernmost block of 145th Street. That bus, by the way, the BX-19 to Bronx Park. Um, I don't know exactly where in Bronx Park it terminates, but that's where the Bronx Zoo is. So you can take a bus all the way to the Bronx Zoo from here. All right, crossing Riverside Drive. Well, let's take a look. Riverside Drive south and north. And here we are at the entrance at the end of 145th Street to Riverbank State Park. What a nice name. Riverbank. The other name for this park, unofficial of course, but which some of the locals call, is Sewage Park. Why? I'll tell you in a minute. Let's just get a look. That's the Henry Hudson Parkway with the auto traffic. And then uh, below here, you can see a double track Amtrak line that connects Penn Station to Albany. Well, actually just connects Penn Station to the Metro North Hudson Line at Spite and Dival. So, here we are at the entrance to Riverbank State Park. And I don't know how late it's open. I... Oh. Hi, I was just curious, the 11 p.m. closing time, is that still? Thank you. <laughs> so this park is open every day from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. It's a New York State Park. Okay, here's another view to 
the railroad tracks, a city sanitation, salt shed, the Hudson River and New Jersey, Englewood perhaps, sorry I don't know. Oh yes, why is this park sometimes called Sewage Park? So those stacks in the background um, are stacks, they're vents for the North River Wastewater Treatment Plant, also called the North River Water Pollution Control Plant. I think now they're trying to change the terminology again to call it a wastewater resource plant or something like that. So here we are on the state park level and immediately below the state park is the North River Wastewater Treatment Plant, which treats the wastewater from uh, a large portion of Upper Manhattan. As is often the case when something huge, like a wastewater treatment plant, which requires a lot of acreage, gets built in the city, then uh, there is usually a community benefit as part of the budget for, in this case, building the wastewater treatment plant. So, um, that's what happened in this case, uh, working with the state This park was created, it's been open for 20 or more years now. So there's the map, it doesn't explain a whole lot, it does it. There are numbers, uh, identifying points of interest, but there's no legend explaining what the numbers are. Or, uh, there's at least a UR here. Um, and from the UR here, we can see that the restrooms are all the way on the opposite end of the park. There is a restaurant here. I believe it's open to the public. Sofrito. <laughs> and just aren't there, there aren't that many state parks uh, <laughs> that receive regular New York City bus service every 10 to 15 minutes.
Look at our timing is good. Uh, there's a barge going north up the Hudson River. the George Washington Bridge in the distance in oh and if you can see hard to tell from the viewfinder here but uh, well two things one is uh, just to the left of the Manhattan Anchorage Tower the George Washington Bridge is the little red lighthouse of children's book fame um, maybe the more interesting thing is how slowly the trucks are moving on the upper level of the bridge headed towards Manhattan they're almost at a standstill and that we're going to stay on the upper level and see one more part of the park for an amphitheater. I didn't know that was here. Oh. All right. Let's look for an amphitheater. It is a Monday and it's a school day. So not a whole lot of people here. Though there do appear to be some school-aged children here. I'm sure they're on an authorized field trip of some kind. Smell-O-Vision were in operation right now, we would be smelling uh, what you normally smell at the primary treatment section of a wastewater treatment plant. I don't know how else to describe it, but <clears throat> this uh, area below here, you can see the stairway, which is not open to the public, leading down. Uh, and you can see uh, posts for used uh, to wrap ropes around when anchoring a ship here. What kind of ship would dock here? A New York City sludge vessel, uh, which carries sludge, the byproduct of wastewater treatment, to a plant. Um, I'm not sure which one, maybe Ward's Island in the Bronx, where uh, the sludge is dewatered. Um, but in any event, that's where the boat docks to receive the sludge, the product of the wastewater treatment process. Now, uh, there have been times in the recent past where uh, exuberant visitors to the park 
have leaned over this railing and have uh, tried to pelt the people working the docks or on the sludge boat or in the wastewater treatment plant itself. So, uh, a few times the uh, park officials have had to be called in order to restore order to the sludge loading process. Let's just get a look. Um, again, the George Washington Bridge not moving. Let's just get a look across the river. Over here, a swimming pool. Not in service yet. It's very quiet here. Okay, so this mural uh, works in a lot of themes here. The Apollo Theater, Community Board 9, which is the community board where this park is located. New York City DEP, uh, that's who built this wastewater treatment plant and New York State Parks that operates the park. So, So, baseball, um, and you can see in the background the tower of the Riverside Church, and that is about as much of this park as we're going to see today, and uh, we've just about used up our hour. So, as a reminder, uh, we the, the closest subway stop to the entrance to this park is 145th Street on the 1. And then it's just one long block to this park. Riverbank State Park. runs between 135th Street and 145th Street. That's a half mile in length. And there you go. Thanks for walking it with me. This is Infrared, and this is what you've been watching.